We're going to start off with a prayer from Councilman Wright, and then we'll stand and do pledge list. Let me let me share one thing with you uh, before we pray. Um, as as most of you know, I'm a, well, I guess you'd say a fan of the Native American uh, writings and prayers, and uh, from time to time I do quite a bit of research. But I want I want to pay some to you tonight the Indian Ten Commandments and uh, it struck me uh, uh, how respectful uh, the Native Americans were and, uh, and how they felt about this earth and people so here goes number one treat the earth and all that dwells therein with respect number two remain close to the great spirit number three show great respect for your fellow beings Number four, work together for the benefit of all mankind. Number five, give assistance and kindness where needed, wherever needed. Number six, do what you know to be right. Number seven, looking after the well-being of mind and body. Number eight, dedicate a share of your efforts to the greater good. Number nine, be truthful and honest at all times. And number ten, take full responsibility for your actions. Would you bow your head with us? Heavenly Father, we give thanks for our nation formed some 239 years ago and built on your principles and commandments. And Father, may we today strive to live in accordance to your laws like the Native Americans were expressed in their views that I just read. And help us to be appreciative of all uh, mankind and be concerned about our land and all of our people regardless of race, religion, and gender. And may we seek to work together for the benefit of all. Bless our meeting and each attendee tonight. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Here. Wayne Here. 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 Chris Ava? Yes. Wayne Best? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Mead? Yes. Ken Minot? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Both paid the salaries? Motion. Second. Motion, second. Anybody have any money? Chris Ava? Yes. Wayne Best? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Mead? Yes. Ken Minot? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. This time we'll hear a delegation. If anybody in the audience has got anything for us, if you would stand, state your, your name, and uh, hold it at about three minutes. I'm meeting Peter. Uh, I wish this wasn't taped, but there it was. I'm here because I have a voice. Uh, my family spent time in the uh, legislation and city council and I appreciate your terrible hard job. I know it's hard. Um, but there are so many things. I'm so saddened by events that I know you have no control over. But I felt compelled to come and speak to them if it's okay. Um, graciously, uh, Mr. Young helped me address one issue today with the new pipe that he put in the Bonia Street. Patients can't get to my office. If you don't have the intersection between the Bonnie and Queen, there is no egress out of the parking lot on either side of me. You, there's no bridge now on Margrave because that was shut down Margrave and Queen. Many of my patients are elderly and don't know the back roads of Heron and can't get here. Several patients were 45 minutes to an hour late. The contractor, who I understand is not HUB's responsibility particularly, just close the road instead of having the detour. Mr. Young addressed that and helped us with that today and I appreciate that. Um, but it's difficult 
I'm one of the few businesses that have chosen to stay in the city of Harriman when everybody else has left. Uh, I'm one of the few places that has brought somebody in, uh, uh, Thompson Engineering, who is doing the road to what road is in my building after we read it not just there. And it's discouraging for me. And then last week, thank goodness for their help, they were willing to come off and sweep as the floodwaters came down the road, down North Creamery, down the Bonia, down both the road and into my building. I've heard officials say it's Mother Nature. Well, it's no more Mother Nature than it's Mother Goose. And the weather is God's plan, not mine. And if it were only one time of flash flood, okay. But it's not one time. It's flooded before. It's not been as bad as it was last week. But it has come close many times in the building more than once. And at some point in time, to me, that becomes neglect or quit planning. If it weren't for the Miller Brewer building, the road behind you would be open. That wouldn't change the flooding, but it would change the traffic. And, you know, I have born here, raised here, went to school here, my children are here, I practice medicine here. I probably spend more hours in the city of Harriman than many of them because I work here 50, 60 hours a week. And, you know, I pay taxes. We pay HUB wonderfully for their work, and they have never not responded to me quickly, both at home, in the office, and I applaud them. They are gracious and kind and do wonderful work. But I live a mile out of the city of Harriman, and I have no voice and no vote. And it saddens me that I know the response. It's the water department. It's the street department. It's HUB. Oh, now it's the county. And as Lonnie said, be responsible. You know, it's, he said, she said, it's somebody else's responsibility. It is still the city of Hamilton. And what saddens me the most is there's one person affected by so much of this, and that's me right down there on that corner, and it's only me. And I don't even get to vote. And I guess my expectations are pretty low. But we see this little town die, and you wonder why. even though it's someone else's official responsibility that we have. Perhaps not pawn off, but ask someone else to take it. It is still our city, and you are still the leaders of our city. And I would love to see some action and responsibility. I know it's the county that will destruct this building, but is anybody talking to them or saying anything, or is just their responsibility? And I think there are many others in the city other than me that feel this way. But I thank you for your graciousness for letting a non-citizen who lives in right here speak. I appreciate your listening, and I hope you will take it to heart and perhaps move in, that, in some direction for us. Thank you. Thank you. You about say anything? Uh, we're we'll moving to the agenda. Uh, old business. Councilman Hall. <coughs> Councilman Lee. Well, just other to expand on what she said. We the drainage issues. I got some phone calls on it, and whether it's houses <coughs> on this property, I own and then you know got water in it also. I understand some of it is the homeowner, business owner, property owner, but when it gets to a point, you know, I know we've talked about sewer drains and trying to get stuff done with it, but when it gets to a point where it started affecting people's wallets and their livelihood, you know, I think we do need to take a harder look at it. And if we're taking the stance of the city's not responsible or we can't afford to do it, which I understand money's tight, then we need to look and push our insurance company to take care of these people because we're taking on the risk of saying, hey, we're not going to fix these sewers or drains. But if you take on that risk, then you ought to be liable for taking that risk and your liability is held within your insurance. So yeah, that's all I have. Councilman Wright? Councilman Wright? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
Um, just, just to elaborate a little bit more on what you talked about, I've been to the county twice about the buildings on Rome Street. You all have got an email that's saying that the bid now is more than what they even, uh, the money they appropriated, so now they're going to have to go back to get approval to spend more money. And, uh, you know, as I said before, we, as she said, we are the leaders of this town. This is our city to take care of. If we don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. And uh, how long will we continue letting the county and everybody else run over us? Uh, you know, we, we keep getting emails that they've postponed it, they're moving it, they're moving it. You know, I seen a head on collision today right in front of Atkinson's because of those streets. Because the person I think thought the area was telling them to get over in this lane, so they did, and they crashed and, and it tore little cars off pieces. Uh, and, and I know that we sit and we say, just like you, you know, it's somebody else, it's somebody else, but we have to eventually take some responsibility. And, you know, even if we turn on the buildings and, and, and build them, we've got to do something. Uh, because I think they're going to keep prolonging it, prolonging it, and prolonging it until they set a budget, you know, which could be two or three months from now. But uh, I think we're going to have to start pushing the envelope and, and making the people do something. Uh, we've got some stuff in the agenda today that talks about that on some lanes. You know, we'll discuss it when we get to it. But, uh, We've got some decisions to make, and I think you know it's time that we start making them and start pushing back and put that in back push us around. I appreciate your you coming and talking. Department reports. Yes, sir. Police department. Um, we have nothing major to report at this time. There, however, I am coming to seek permission. Uh, we. We updated our L3 camera system that goes in the cars several months ago, and the Rome County Sheriff's Department had the same system, and they're changing their system to a different one. And we have an opportunity right now to purchase two uh, two of their cameras. Uh, and we would like permission to to do that with five thousand dollars from the drug fund. Uh, normally, these cameras cost a little over five thousand each, and it's something that we have to continually buy anyway. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to save half, save half of that. So. We would like to seek permission from council to spend uh, five thousand uh, to pay the Rome County Sheriff's Department for two of the mobile vision L3 camera systems. Have they they come to you and discuss this for purchase and stuff? We have money in the drug fund. The drug fund has money. Mm -hmm. uh, motion to let the uh, police department spend five thousand dollars. Yes, sir. To uh, to buy two cameras. Yes, sir. That's correct. Motion. A motion. A motion from uh, Councilman Ayler. Second, Councilman Wright. Councilman Ayler. No, sir. Councilman no. Wright. Anybody else have anything? Call the list. Chris Ayler? Yes. Wayne Bass? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Mee? Yes. Ken Minot? Disclaimer. Uh, although I work for the Sheriff's Department, I would have voted for this regardless. Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. Okay, that's all I answer. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. <coughs> Chief Goss, you have anything? Uh, no, sorry, ma'am. Library? The library is flooded also. It's still running. Right so. I've talked to Barrett and Simon to come out here and ask about some of the walls. The walls have to pop down in the handicap section. It's not a problem. Okay. How's the temperature building? Good. Any other department reports? Committee reports? May I? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I want to let you know that uh, during this week you'll be receiving a list of uh, property that we're going to be requesting uh, at next month's meeting for you to declare a surplus. Um, Kenny has been working on that, and uh, once he gets that all together, if you declare all those items as surplus, uh, he'll be listing those on gut deals for uh, for sale. Um, most of the, the items are vehicles, but there's a couple of other things uh, that will be on the list as well, primarily from the um, police and fire departments. Um, as was mentioned, uh, we did uh, suffer some flooding uh, at the library, uh, as well as at the police department. On Monday of this week, the insurance investor uh, was here to look at that damage, and uh, all that paperwork is progressing uh, at this point in time. 
We also had uh, several different uh, stormwater uh, infrastructure um, components that were damaged during the flood uh, as well. Uh, that's something that um, Drac has been working on this week. Uh, we've gone out taking a look at the areas that we're aware of uh, and we're trying to get those uh, repaired as well. Um, also, uh, wanted to let you know with regard to some, some uh, personnel changes, uh, as you um, are aware, uh, our city clerk, uh, Angie, will be leaving us uh, at the end of the month. Um, happy to report that uh, Teresa Daniels in our office has been uh, appointed as the uh, interim city clerk. Um, she'll have some uh, certifications that she'll need to obtain with regard to the uh, city clerk designation. Uh, but I would anticipate in the future removing that interim title uh, when she has uh, obtained those certifications. Um, also, uh, with regard to that, um, Natasha West has been moved from a part-time employee to a temporary full-time employee to take Teresa's place um, so that we'll be able to maintain uh, the same staffing level here at the office as uh, what we have done previously. Uh, and then finally, um, Rebecca Schwepfinger has been um, hired as the Special Events Coordinator uh, and Public Relations person for the city uh, to be working out of our Trailhead office. Uh, she is in attendance tonight, so I hope you'll take the opportunity to uh, talk with her after the meeting. Kevin, have we, have we uh, received any more information on the bridge? Oh, no. Margrave's bridge. Margrave's. Uh, the only information I've received at this point in time uh, is information related to uh, the cost associated with the project, uh, comparing whether or not we went forward with the project versus uh, versus not. Um, and uh, uh, within that particular uh, breakdown, there was some information regarding what the next step would be. Um, the next step is to finalize the updates and plans. Um, once that is done, there will be a dollar a figure that is associated with the remaining right-of-way that needs to be purchased. Uh, I believe that's going to be four parcels. Um, that will be <clears throat> the only thing uh, left within the process that the city will need to cost share in. Um, we won't know exactly what the total will be until we receive that updated report, but I would expect it to be um, probably less than $20,000. Um, and then once we place that money in our LGIP account and make it available to TDOT, um, they will actually begin purchasing the right-of-way. Um, and once the right-of-way is purchased, they'll move to construction. I'd like to address the employee changes that we're making. Uh, I hate to see Angie go, but I understand. I think it was Zig Ziglar that said, the only thing worse than training an employee and losing them is not training them and keeping them, so we want to wish her good luck. Well, Carly, you have anything? Uh, one thing, um, I have uh, contacted county uh, record services for purposes of doing our tax notices this year. They're preparing a um, proposal for me which I plan to bring back next meeting um, for your approval if we agree on the terms. It's the same organization that's doing Rockwood, the county and Kingston. So it, it was it's in our favor to have them do ours as well. So I'll be uh, coming back and informing you about that next meeting. Have you heard anything about when we're going to find out the Thanks. No, I uh, only heard that it probably will go up as opposed to going down. And that's a rumor, that's not a facial fact. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Curly. Uh, committee reports, any committee reports? I'd like to say the far farmer's market is up and running and uh, you guys are missing out if you're not down there buying some of that sweet corn and those delicious tomatoes. They're, they're really good. 
tell us again when that is, Saturdays? Kim, when is it Saturdays? Saturdays from uh, 8 o'clock until noon, and Wednesday afternoon from six, uh, 3 to 6. Thank you. HEB report? Yes, sir. Thank you. We've already sort of talked around uh, a big project that we're doing now, and that is the water line replacement that's going on on Devonian and also over on Salura. Uh, there was a, a brief closing of the road to bring in some rock and all today. Uh, I did, I did speak to the contractor. I, you know, I'm sorry that occurred. Uh, I will say I appreciate uh, Dr. Tedder's kind of remarks because uh, we did try to address that. Uh, but I would also say that you know, she referenced the contractor not being us, but if we have contractors working for us, we're responsible. I'm responsible for that. So that was my fault that something occurred there today. And hopefully we'll get that, get that part of the project wrapped up here before too long. Uh, Rear Tan Road, you know, it's still ongoing. Everybody knows last week, you know, there wasn't a lot went on out there, but you know, they're back, they're back scratching in the mud. Now, so hopefully that uh, moving forward. Uh, I mentioned to you all uh, sometime back that we extended the gas line on down on Bluff Road in the Midtown area. After we did that, we had a uh, road, uh, road down there, High Highland Way Road, and a number of people on that road approached us and said, we'd like to get on your gas system. So we extended the line up Highland Way Road. We just finished that. We've added about a dozen customers in that area. So. That's a good thing, so we'll go to our system. I know everybody's anxious to get the new signal equipment in. I'm glad to tell you that the walk and don't walk signal work is supposed to begin tomorrow, barring anything unforeseen. The signals out at the Webster Pipe, the Armand's Crossing, that, that's going to begin Thursday. Uh, Emory will begin <coughs> after that work is done, and I think Mr. Ladd's already coordinated with the police department about uh, we'll need some traffic thing out there on the highway on Thursday. And last thing is Edward Road and uh, Dickey Valley where we've been doing the electric three phase project. Our crew's been doing that. Uh, the project is nearly complete. Again, we've had you know a few weather issues, but it's been stuff that works progressed along very well. So that's what we have. Glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Young. Discuss and possibly take action on the paper mill site building. Uh, I think we've got this back on the agenda to uh, I talked to Harry Gay today. He came out. He's been down there the contractor down there surveying the site, getting ready to move the dirt and stuff. And that contractor said that he in his contract he did not have any work on between Emory Road and the railroad track. Which means they're not going to demolish either of those buildings up there. Uh, they're, all their work is on from the railroad track to the river. So if that's true, you're going to leave me. Did they not send somebody down that went through them and to see about the uh, yeah. hazardous material and stuff? Yeah. Meat Corporation, Meat West Lake area. And, uh, I thought that was going to be in the contract. That was our understanding. Wasn't the contract? He doesn't have any work up there. He's not part of the property. E EPA is the one, I guess, determined what would be done. Right? I guess they they they, they does the sampling of us. I mean, they had them and they said that wasn't part of the <coughs> remediation. So I got them ample sampling of us. Well, they put them in the drill cell up there, but they didn't show any contamination. So they didn't. Well, that area wasn't used as part of the manufacturing process anyway, so it should, really should be no, uh, no uh, possibility of getting any kind of unwelcome material in there. I wouldn't think so. There was a, a plastic line pond up there, but it didn't, it didn't hold anything happen because the, the plastic still there. There was nothing in it. What was the plastic that was great pond? 
So we got the buildings anyway. I think we got them anyway. <clears throat> who's who's paying for the who's paying for the, the cleanup right now? I understand it's Meat right. Speaker. So they are paying for the part over on the other side. Oh yeah. Well, good. You said you'd cover this side, so, yeah. so we're covered. We're covered. We're covered. I'll try to go to that one. Oh. <laughs> that old Ed man building. <clears throat> but anyway, I thought I'd mention that before we decided on the one on that side because I don't think it's appropriate to decide on something. Kevin, could you check with the contract to make sure that that's correct? Did he send you? I know he gave me my the the map uh, with the uh, yeah the wells wells is, is the only thing that I ever see. Okay. Um, well, he came by this afternoon, so yeah. if that is in fact true, then that makes this point on the agenda move. Yeah. Right. I think we ought to put it off. Until I, get off. I tried to get down there today, but we had <coughs> Bill and I were in meetings from two to four thirty, and then came in. Yeah, we'll check it out and we can do it next week. If you, yeah. yeah. And the building still belong to the Mead Corporation, right? That, that we're discussing. No, it doesn't belong to it. It belongs to the guy that, that we're going to get the land from. The bank Mead is just responsible for cleaning. You know, they believe in the land, but they don't own it. <coughs> Uh, right. but yeah, we'll just wait and if we need to put it back in the next week we can or, or next month. I don't think we're going to be pushed on that. Discuss Postec action on the postage machine contract with advanced mailing systems. Uh, <clears throat> this is something that uh, Angie has been working on. Uh, our current postage machine contract there uh, is up. I know the office staff has not been uh, real pleased with the service that we've received from a particular company that has been providing that to us. So they went out looking for some other options. Um, we found uh, this, this company that we're uh, proposing to you tonight, uh, Neil Post USA company, um, which has both a contract through the state of Tennessee as well as the uh, National Joint Purchasing uh, Alliance uh, Cooperative that we joined a few months back. Uh, either one of those options would be available to us. Uh, I believe this is the company that HUB has been using for some time. They have been satisfied uh, with the service that they have received uh, from the company. Uh, also, our cost uh, would be going down as compared to what we're currently paying. Um, the agreement is a uh, is a lease agreement for the postage machine, 48 months at uh, $66.62 per month. And uh, Angie, what is it that we pay right now? $98 a month. That's just the rental of the machine and does not include postage. That's correct. Still going to save uh, about $32 per month. Uh, and based on the information we've received, we hopefully we'll receive better service as well. Make a motion that we accept the deal of folks made in system. Second. Motion by Councilman Lyons, second Councilman Taylor. Councilman Lyons? No, sir. No. Councilman Taylor? Yes, sir. Anyone else have anything? Where, where is this outfit located? I mean, it's not local, right? There is no local. No, so, neither. Right. Uh, not, that, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I think there's very few companies that, uh, that deal in this type of service. Uh, this one in Pitney Bowes, which is our current uh, supplier, uh, or two that we had uh, looked Looks at. Looks like they're out of Connecticut. How long have y'all been with them, do you? Uh, probably, time gets away from me, but probably at least a year or so. Satisfied? Yes. Chris Edward? Yes. Wayne Best? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Me? Yes. Ken Miner? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes.
discuss and possibly take action on releasing the lien on property located on Lincoln Drive. Um, Maria put, put this information together. Uh, most of it, uh, th this is an issue that dates back, I, I guess, to the early 2000s, um, where a piece of property was cleaned up. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, details with regard to this. Um, so if you would consider uh, doing so, I might recommend deferring until next week. My, my only question, I, I looked at it and, and tried to research some of it, and, and what I'm gathering from reading this thing is that in 99 to 2002, we put a lien on it for uh, overgrown, dirty lot, plantation loose, and things like that. And that time of seven years has, uh, has lapsed or something, uh, which means it would come off. Is that is that the way I understand it? And I may ask you a question that I should have referred to uh, Maria. I, I would uh, need to research that a little more before I answer that question. Because I, I understood statute limitation is seven years. After seven years, we have to take that lien out, which in response, from my standpoint, would be if we're putting liens on property because we're having to clean them up, and that's what we do, we clean them up, and then we attach a lien to the property, well, anybody in their right mind just hold on to it for seven years and then come back and say, take it off. So we're, we're paying somebody to go out and do it, plus we're paying somebody to do the paperwork, and we just take it off. We, we didn't resist it. That's what I would think on how we get our money. Well, then, I, then we need to sue them or, or whatever. I mean, because I, I would sit and think, well, I'm not going to do anything my land anyway, let them do whatever they want to, and I'll just hold on to it, and it comes off in seven years, and we're back to square one. Um, and if it's up there seven years, can we foreclose on it? Hey, a very quick reading of the statute that's provided here, and, and Allison may know more about this than I do, but it, it appears that you, you've got that six-year window, and uh, if it doesn't like you're going to be able to collect it through the lane within six years, um, then you need to uh, institute uh, a suit for collection purposes. I can't really say without seeing what we've got on the Lincoln Drive. I, I really don't know anything about that particular each of the property to know what's going on. I, I mean, I'd say we put it off to next week, but in the in the meantime, maybe our, our city attorney can look at that and see if there's another way with, that we can, can do that stuff to uh, collect our money. This is the same thing, the same provision, I think, the same law that they used right back behind Let it catch up all the taxes there, and it was a six or seven year thing. And they didn't pay the taxes, and then they come in and pay the taxes and the person who bought the property didn't have to pay any of that stuff that was that for the I know we had an issue with that property back there. Good. In, in general though, uh, when we turn taxes over to collective, it includes the lien. Um, and if the taxes aren't collected and you decide within a time frame uh, of period that they haven't been collected yet by the court, you can't go sell a property. <coughs> but you have to uh, treat all properties the same in a single out the wrong properties. So. Could, could we look into how how we are uh, how we the city are <coughs> are managing our <coughs> excuse me our our legal issues like these and and uh, and other issues that uh, uh, where we become involved and uh, we find out later on that nothing's been done about them and uh, time's run out on us. How do we, how do we, how do we manage? it? How do we know? Well, we what cases we've got pending and... Uh, we want to get a monthly report on them. Well, 
on those type of things, yeah, she's going to uh, start doing that. Who? Maria, Maria on uh, property maintenance issues. That's yeah, you know, that's just one area. But we, you know, there are other issues. We can talk about it later. But it's probably not the time, but uh, we 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 don't seem to have any handle on one possible uh, solution to that would be to put that on a schedule basis where you review it every year or every six months, whatever uh, you decide, and take, take the appropriate action at those times. Well, the county's requested a ruling on some of the buildings they've taken, so they might set the residents if they are allowed to give the property back. Because you, when you turn over taxes, as Charles has told us, you have to turn over everybody. Because I was wondering why we were turning over people that owe $2 ten dollars while we did just waive those instead of paying an attorney to go do all the process but he said you have to turn over everybody well that's what the county does and they took all the properties that NK had owned and now they're trying to give a few of them back so if it's determined that they're allowed to give them back then that means you can we will be able to go after individual like this and not have to go after all that so there's a lot to come on this side of things. But, you know, in, in some cases where you have a lien on property, the lien is worth more than the lot. Uh, and so if you try to sell a lot, uh, you'll be end up buying it yourself. So you'll be in possession of the property, but in the long run, not being able to fully recover the cost of the lien. Plus, they don't have to keep the property. Would you have a the lien on the property to next week's agenda? Uh, reading the resolution of R0715-01, a resolution authorizing the City of Harriman to participate in the TML Risk Management Pool, Safety Partners, Loss Control Matching Grant Program. Mm -hmm. This is an annual program that's made available to um, all of the cities that are insured that uh, TML Risk Management Pool uh, provides uh, partial reimbursement um, up to 50% uh, at, at set limits uh, for equipment uh, safety related for employees that uh, would presumably uh, reduce our risk of having workers' compensation claims. Um, this year we are proposing to use those funds to purchase uh, some turnout gear for uh, the fire department. Um, our portion of uh, the funding would be taken from what we typically budget year in and year out uh, for purchases such as this, so it's not requiring any additional allocation. Uh, hopefully what it will do is allow us to purchase uh, one additional set of gear utilizing uh, the insurance company's funding as matching towards that. Are we currently participating in this program? Uh, yes. It, it's uh, it's put out again uh, each year and we're eligible to apply each year and uh, I know the city has utilized that in the past. I move the grant. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Wright, second by Councilman Mike. Councilman Wright? No. Councilman Mike, no sir. Anybody else? Chris Aver? Yes. Mike Betts? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenny Meese? Yes. Ken Bonnet? Yes. Monty Knight? Yes. Uh, discuss, uh, discuss and possibly approve repairs to the fire department rescue truck. <laughs> this is the item that uh, we have previously addressed through some conversations and I've given you some information related to. Um, due to the uh, emergency nature of this particular vehicle, uh, as well as some uh, others within the department that we have had down. Uh, we have moved forward uh, with making the purchase as, as an emergency purchase. And uh, as per our purchasing policies, uh, I, I am to report that to you all uh, at the first opportunity available. Um, the motor for the rescue truck uh, is inoperable. Um, we have ordered a new motor. Uh, total, um, total cost of that motor is expected to be uh, between $3,500 and $4,000, um, and the installation will be done by our city mechanic. 
Motion to approve. I have a motion to second. Second. Motion from Councilman Minot. Second from Councilman Adler. Councilman Minot. Uh, this is a this is a uh, truck that we need desperately in the fire department. So I think this is a good move. I, I think during our budget discussions, we've talked about <clears throat> perhaps uh, looking at some of the capital expenditures necessary for the fire department. And I think uh, I think an equipment uh, purchase is is a large one will eventually be imminent, uh, just because of the general state of the equipment they have right now to work with. So I'm glad we're getting this taken care of now, but I think we're going to have to buy some newer equipment soon. Anyone else? Call this. Sir Silent? Yes. Wayne Best? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Lee? Yes. Ken Minot? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. <coughs> Discuss and possibly approve a mower engine replacement for the Public Works Department. We have a uh, zero turn radius mower within the Public Works Department. Um, the unit itself is still in uh, good working order, but the uh, engine itself is going out. The replacement engine uh, for that particular unit would be about $2,500. Uh, an entire new mower would be uh, of this sort, commercial grade, would be uh, in excess of $10,000. So, uh, we are requesting um, we be authorized to uh, purchase that replacement engine for this mower. Um, and just to let you know how uh, important this is, in addition to this item, um, our John Deere Bush Hog has also been uh, been down and uh, is undergoing repairs. Uh, we do not anticipate the, uh, the repairs on that to be nearly as expensive uh, as replacing uh, this motor, but it has put us behind. Uh, when you combine it with uh, with the rain you've had as well. I'll make a motion we purchase the motor. Motion second. Second. Motion from Councilman Lee, second by Councilman Holly. Councilman May? No, sir. Councilman Holly? No. Anyone else? I know we've been doing a lot of mowing this year. Grass is growing so quick, of course, we've done a lot of rain. So we've got to provide the department with, with the equipment that they need to accomplish their mission, so this is, this is a good work. Call it, please. Chris Evan? Yes. Wayne Vest? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Lee? Yes. Ken Minot? Yes. Lonnie Wright? Yes. I need a motion to waive the agenda rule to uh, discuss a company who won't come in and do some filming in the hospital this weekend. Motion. Motion to second. Second. All in favor, just aye. Aye. Uh, I think everybody's got that in their packet. Uh, the company just wants to come in and discuss a little bit about it. Uh, Kevin, you want to touch on that? We were uh, initially contacted by this company um, over the weekend. Uh, we received the written request today, and that's what you have in your packet. It's a uh, nonprofit organization uh, that makes uh, religious and educational films. Um, this particular film is uh, called Room for Reagan. It's a story of Reagan Morris, uh, who was uh, an East Tennessee child who was diagnosed with cancer. Um, it's, it's his story, essentially, that they're filming. Um, they are looking for a site where they could film some scenes that would be interior shots of a hospital and have asked if we would uh, consider allowing them to utilize the old hospital here in Harriman. Um, 60 percent of the gross revenue that they are receiving will be allocated to charities uh, such as the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital and uh, the Reagan Morris uh, Foundation which supports uh, families uh, who have children who have been diagnosed with cancer. 40% of the proceeds would be returned to JC Films, who is making this request, uh, which would be intended to recoup the investment that they're, they're putting in <coughs> to the film. They're paying all of the expenses uh, up front. <coughs> they um, uh, have agreed, and uh, if approved, would be providing us with a copy of their uh, insurance policy, the general liability, in an amount of $1 million, uh, so that we would be covered if anything uh, were to happen there. Um, if approved, uh, they, are, they are requesting and wanting to film uh, Thursday and Friday of this week. I think it's a great thing. Uh, I talked to one of them and they said there would be anywhere from 60 to 100 people down here during the filming. Uh, 
uh, and, and most of us have probably seen on the, the local TV stations the story about Craven. Uh, I think he died on, on Christmas Day 2014. Uh, it's a great inspirational film. Uh, I think it's a, a boost to Harriman that they, that they even looked at us to come and, and shoot some of the film. Uh, most of us have been shot up in Seville. Uh, I think it's a great thing. I think it brings people in here uh, to see our town utilizing the hospital. Something we haven't done in for a while. Are you really making the arrangements for opening the hospital for them? And I move to allow it. I always comment after. Motion to have second. Second. A motion for Councilman Wright, second. Councilman Meyer, Councilman Wright, should have I think I heard uh, Councilman Holly ask if uh, we would have people there on the site during, during the filming. Um, we would, um, depend, depending on exactly what they're doing and how long they're going to be there, um, I don't know whether we would keep them there the entire time that they're there, but we would certainly be in and out, um, checking on them, making sure that everything is uh, handled appropriately. And we'll have a copy of the liability insurance in case there's any problems there. Yes. Dr. Kerr. Uh, I wouldn't flip all the utilities on at one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that, that being noted, um, are they paying in our utility costs? Um, they. Uh, that, that hasn't been discussed, uh, uh, though based upon um, what their intended uses are, uh, I would expect the, uh, the cost to be minimal, if, uh, if any, really, um, based upon what, you know, the, the level that we keep on at the hospital at the time. Um, we're, we're probably talking about uh, turning the lights on for two days on, on one floor, probably not even a whole floor at that. You might want to check into that because some of these uh, uh, lights that they use in film production are pretty high uh, usage. So you might want to check that. Could they not possibly use a generator? To run the lights in the hospital? To run if they brought their own equipment because I don't think in film production they use a lot of fluorescent lights, which the hospital is mainly equipped with. Right. That is, uh, is possible. Well, for the amount they're going to use, I have no problem with, and it's for a charitable organization, so I have no problem turning on the lights. We might, might want to ask ask what what their the electrical consumption might be. If it's going to be exorbitant, then we would, we would need to be reimbursed for it. If it's not, if it's going to be minimal, I don't have a problem with it either. And I will say that uh, this project has a local uh, participant, uh, Mr. Kirkland, who is involved in this type of uh, film production, uh, lives here, uh, grew up here, and uh, he's, uh, he's the one that approached me uh, about project before. Yeah. I, I, I would think we want, want somebody uh, who, who has knowledge of that hospital as far as the, the facilities, wouldn't we? Uh, like fire there. It just seems like that would be a the most reasonable thing is to have someone there who who, who could assist them. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll work all that out. Oh, okay. I think that'd be great. <coughs> Anyone else? Call real please. Chris Ava? Yes. Wayne Best? Yes. Buddy Holly? Yes. Kenyon Me? Yes. Ken Monet? Yes. Monty Wright? Yes. Uh, Anybody else have anything come before council? I want to thank all of you all for coming, uh, being a part of Harriman, uh, coming and showing concern for Harriman. Appreciate y'all coming to the meetings. Uh, Angie, uh, we're gonna miss you. If you're not going far, but we're still gonna miss you. I think this may be your last meeting. Uh, it's it's been a fun run. I've
I've only been here about six or seven months, but uh, you've, you've been a lot of help for me. So, uh, HB, you're, you're getting good. Motion to adjourn. Motion. 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 Mot